Hello, welcome to Rich Tech. If you're a visitor here, kindly consider subscribing, liking, and sharing these videos. I've been doing for some time many videos concerning MagSafe repairs, and uh, this is the latest one. And I hope you learn something out of this. Now, here today I have this uh, 45 watt MagSafe 2 charger, and uh, it's good, fairly good, except at that point. It's a few like uh, 20 centimeters from the connector. It has this damage, and the outer insulation has been uh, ripped off, and the wires they are mangled. Mm -hmm. So this cannot be used anymore like this. And I was uh, considering it, and I've tested it. I've seen it. it's working. It's okay. So I thought I should convert this into a MagSafe one. Uh, charger that is with a L shape connector so this is an L shape connector which I found I want to remove that and replace it with that but uh, because this cable is spoiled at this junction I'll cut the cable off at that point and then connect the L shape connector at that point now stay tuned The first step in this MagSafe 2 to MagSafe 1 conversion is to cut off this portion of the cable which is destroyed. I'll uh, spare this and use it in another project that I have. I can see the connector is still okay. It will only need a new cable to be attached at that point. So let's put this aside. Now here is our ending. And that's the point where we want to attach it to this L-shaped connector and make a an MagSafe 1 charger. I'll prepare this connector portion first of all. And in case you're wondering, I've already tested this connector, it's also working. Now, if you're able to pull this outer rubber insulation out from underneath this uh, aluminum casing, well and good. You can try that by twisting it back and forth or pulling it like that some come out fairly easily but some are tightly fixed in there if, if uh, yours is the second case it's tightly fixed in there then you can use a sharp razor try to put it uh, push it far inwards as far as possible then cut off the outer rubber insulation from somewhere underneath there not here from somewhere underneath there and that's what i've done and i've been able to cut it off you can see some a bit of this portion will disappear under the casing. This is important because we'll use this uh, rubber insulation again when we've already soldered at this point the wire connections. To put this into context, we want to solder this back here and we'll use this rubber uh, junction to cover our joint. And also we do not want this to be seen outside, so we'll need to push a bit of this to go in there. And I can also show you from this side, you can see I've cut it some distance inside there. And that's how you go about it. And then before you forget, slide this, the right side, back into this cable which you want to use afterwards. And uh, now we can prepare these two ends for soldering by removing the insulation at the ends and so here are the ends of our cable from the connector side we have the positive wire uh, exposed and the negative wires are there and from this side we also have the positive wire exposed so i'm going to put some solder at both ends and solder these two together the positive ones that is I'll solder these two, that's my connector held with this pliers so that it is in place, it doesn't shake. Solder these two. Make sure the wire is straight. And the joint is also straight. Okay. 
de suite. The solder joint, you can see I've trimmed off excess solder with the razor. So it is uh, almost the same diameter as the bare wire. And now this is the next step. We will insulate. I'll go ahead and insulate that junction using first of all super glue. This also adds to the strength of the joint. And then there is this heat shrink tubing which we inserted. I'll pull it over the junction so that it can also insulate the joint. my soldering iron so as to shrink this heat shrink tubing into place. And this is our solder joint already covered with heat shrink tubing. It's fairly strong now. Now we'll connect the two negative wires from both sides by placing them over the joint. When you're placing the negative wires over the joint, it's important to start with the side next to the connector. Lay them down, then you lay the ones on the side of the cable. This is so so that uh, when you're sliding the rubber insulation, this rubber insulation over this joint, it may not uh, damage these wires because they are facing the rubber insulation. They will be under these wires. Even though we'll use uh, glue to attach these wires together. So I'll place this other side over the joint too, just with my hands, ensuring there is contact to various points. Once the negative wires are relatively on top of each other, then we put super glue. Please, uh, maybe let's say uh, three drops or so. Wonder about and then using a piece of uh, polythene, wrap it around the joint and then roll it. Roll it with the uh, plastic. Your fingers don't touch the super glue. And also, secondly, it's easy to shape that junction. Now, super glue has held the wires in place. Now we can test if uh, this wire works or if this charger is able to charge. Testing is fairly easy. In this case, I'll use a MacBook Air, but uh, because this is a MagSafe One connector, I'll use this adapter. Then uh, 
use it over the it's a good sign so our work here is uh, perfect this contact on the negative wires and the surprise or the great mystery here is the super glue is able to connect these two negative wires from the connector side and the cable side and provide connectivity our charger is working so let's go ahead and now we'll pull this portion to cover this and to pull this just use a piece of wet cloth and pull it slowly the rubber insulation that is until it reaches that point now we are ready to close the joint before we pull it all the way to the end we put some super glue here to ensure that the rubber insulation will not come back once we pull it over this joint having done that we pull this in one quick pull ensuring it goes all the way and then we wipe off the excess glue quickly and uh, can use our plastic once again to roll this into place and that's it the glue dries in minutes and I can also use my long nose pliers to shape this joint and that's it the conversion from MagSafe 2 to MagSafe 1 is almost complete I only need to pull this all the way in there let me show you how it will be before I put the glue uh, how it will be okay that's how it will be no one will be able to tell if there is a joint underneath there so let's pull it back and put glue under this joint right here and then uh, permanently pull it over apply glue generously even to the inner portion of that casing then with one fast pull push that inside that's it allow it to dry and test again At every step of this repair or conversion you find me testing so I'll use my adapter once again and test the finished work. It's working, it's charging. And that's how you convert your MagSafe 2 into a MagSafe 1 charger. And uh, if you like these kinds of videos kindly consider subscribing, liking and sharing. I appreciate for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.